Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the PBA 50 Tour again. we got a full booth here. Mike Flanagan here with Tom Carter, as always, and Dave Small. Oh. David Small, <laughs> our host of this event, is going to sit with us for the Step Letter Sure, final. why not? This will be fun, as always. Tom and I always had a good time back in the day, so thanks well, he, for the invite. Well, thanks Dave Small is Mr. PBA. I wouldn't go that far, but I appreciate that. What tournament is this again? How many have you hosted? 74. 74. 74. 75 will be that next week. That is a huge 75 number. 75 next week, yep. 25th... Uh, PBA 50, so yeah. That's yeah. incredible, buddy. Let's uh, take it out well, to the lane. Thank you so much. Absolutely. We got Absolutely. Uh, John Weber down there making some announcements. Rooting for Brian Goble, maybe he can pick this sparrow. Oh, well, he just missed, so, oh, too bad. All right, <laughs> nice job, John. Wow, nice job, that, John that, 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 oh, that, Too bad. Uh, that's the way to get the crowd going. <laughs> uh, I did that. I warmed him up in Kokomo this fall, this winter, actually. It was funny. And, I, you know, what happens when, uh, you know, Jason Belmonte strikes? Yeah! What happens when he leaves a solid temp and, oh, welcome to Kokomo. <laughs> and everyone kind of got a kick out of that. Brian Goble, PBA Hall of Famer. Yay, Brian. Nice to see Brian back out. He took a couple of years off. and uh, Well, we basically got four PBA Hall of Famers. It's nice field. On the I mean, show. Yeah. You know, Parker and Lenny and Brian. and. Well, you got three PBA Chris Hall of Famers and a USBC Hall of Famer. It's quite impressive. It's a nice field. It's uh, probably, when you look at it, when you look at experience-wise, obviously Parker being the kind of favorite today, you know, defending champion. Thank you, John Weber, for those announcements. And you see the banners out over the lanes, folks. We have five former champions here on the PBA 50 Tour. No new champions here tonight. We've got a lot of experience. Tonight's step ladder, the number five seed, Lenny Borish, is going to start the match on the left lane. Brian Goebel had lane choice. He is electing to have Lenny start. The winner of this match will go on to take on our number three seed, Brad Angelo, who just came off a 300 game in a round of eight. Our number two seed, who's won four times this year, looking to win his fifth title is Parker Bone the third. And our number one seed is Chris Barnes. It's the fifth time this year on our PBA 50 tour that he has been the number one overall qualifier going into the seeding rounds of the bracket. So Chris Barnes looking to defeat possibly Parker Bone the third. He's 0-2 this year against Parker. And Parker loves this house. Parker is our defending champion. He also won here in 2017 and finished third in 2018. So, uh, Parker, this is one of his favorite houses, and be the first time we had a three-time champion in one of my centers, so it uh, be exciting. Well, Parker has obviously got the hot hand. I mean, the whole family's got the hot hand. So, Parker maybe might be crowd favorite, but uh, Chris Barnes by far has got a fantastic look on this pair of lanes. Absolutely. Opening shot on lane 37 for and the Jersey Squasher to open up the match with. Uh, it wasn't quite Brooklyn. You know, I was say it wasn't totally on the left side, but you know. That looked like one of your strikes this week, Tom. Thank oh you. Oh, boy. It wow. Shots fired it early on this one. It did. Shots fired. That's all right. Guys, Brian Goebel, interesting fact here. Goebel, he hasn't been bowling a whole lot. He came back out on this tour this year part-time, but obviously with the COVID pandemic, wasn't bowling a lot. And he told Tom Carter and I both that he has not won a head-to-head -head match play since 2018 and he's won three matches to get to the show here tonight he did say he made a show in 2019 but that was just the last time he's actually been on the show and when you look at the characteristics of this pair if i can interrupt real sure. quick tom 37 and 38 is an interesting interesting pair of lanes 38 is going to play a lot longer uh, then 37, as you see, Brian's ball kind of squirted out a little bit. 37 definitely hooks a little bit more than 38. And well, that was a heck of a try. Well, Brian, he's got uh, two Paragons down there, one with a 2 and 3 eighths pin and another one with a 3 and 3 eighths pin. One's got 500 surface, one's got 1,000. So it's a matter, he's trying to face up the ball to the 
to the pocket, obviously, but trying to read the lanes because the, with the guys coming on with practice, some of the guys are throwing some serious surface. So now it's a trick of reading the front part of the lane. If you get it to read too early, you lose the back end, right? That's correct. And, and if, then if you get it to go too long, you also lose the back end. <laughs> Are you guys talking about the oil pattern, 46 feet in length. It's the Johnny Petraglia this week, 22 milliliters of oil, a 5 to 1 ratio. But it played a little bit tougher than 5 to 1 out here. A little bit tougher, definitely. Uh, the length in this house with our back ends, they do fly considerably very, very hard back ends here. And you will see a lot of corner pins. You will see a lot of solid 10 pins, especially with the entry angle being a little bit farther down the lane. And you will see that a little bit tonight. Speaking of pins. Uh, I had the opportunity to be in the back earlier, and I seen a whole bunch of boxes of new pins. Are we bowling on new pins? Are these? Oh no, no. No, unfortunately, the pins came in Monday. They were ordered in February. Oh, okay. So these are not new pins. Uh, these are the pins you bowled on last year. Okay. Yep. We ordered them um, back in February, and there was a big Serlin shortage uh, out in the, the world with a shortage in every industry, and uh, we were <laughs> just happy we got them. Yeah. Jeez. I mean, the, the pins look great, so that's why I was, I mean, they're really bright white, so I was wondering if we were bowling on new ones. No, these are actually junior gold and PBA 50 and state tournament last year. Yeah, quite a bit. Lenny looking for a quick lead. Beautiful shot. Very nicely done. And Lenny is one of those players, <coughs> he gets the ball so smooth through the heads that well, that ball just kind of has a natural arc to it, and it doesn't really snap well, that hard. And I like, what I, I like his look. Penny, Lenny is your, the voodoo player, as I call him, because yeah. he's got that voodoo role. He can play a part of the lane a lot of the other guys can't because the way he gets the ball through the front part of the lane, he's throwing a proton physics pinned down. It's got 500 on it, but still, you watch Lenny, it's like his ball never sees the front part of the lane. It's just the unique release that he has. Looking for a quick three-bagger and a 37 pin Oh, lead. he That's missed left drastically oh my. on that. My, that was totally uncharacteristic. He hit, I think, 16, 17 at the arrows. Oh, easily. Oh, oh maybe oh, 18, 19. Geez, almost 20. We, I, I can't count much higher than 20, Tom. <laughs> yeah. That's why I don't play that, that part of the lane. That, that's uncharacteristic. I think he's really trying to play around 13, 14, out to about 10, 11. Very bizarre. I mean, both shots on the left lane so far. Lenny not looking himself. Good on the right lane, not good on the left lane. Going straight at it. Gave it a run. Good try. Hey, well, everybody, the, the players this week, there were 85 players that laced them up here. We cut to 28 for the advancers round. Those are the players that cashed, plus a couple super senior checks. Then we went down to a round of 24 where the players bowled three game total pinfall matches. Then we got down to the round of 16, the round of 8, and that's how we got our t top 5 tonight for our stuff ladder, the top 5. Lenny Borish got here. He lost in the round of 8, but he was the highest seed left out of the folks that lost. That's how he became the number 5 seed. Looking for his first strike, Mr. Goble. But oh, geez. Ryan's getting that ball out to round 8, and I just think that's too far on this oil pattern down lane. Now, you would think 5 to 1. We have a lot of oil in the middle and a little bit to the outside. You would think there would be a little bit more bounce to the right, but there is an out of bounds on this pattern. If the guys use enough surface, they can break down that hook spot down lane, but it is really hard to get that ball to bounce off of it. And the guy that can get the ball to bounce off of it the best is our tournament leader, Chris Barnes. He's using equipment that n nobody else is using far as surface-wise and gets the ball to recover. And like I was saying earlier, Tom, you can definitely see lane 38 hangs a little bit more than 37. Well, you so bowl league here. I do. I do bowl league here. So, so you should know every board in this house. Oh, I wouldn't go that far. Lord, I'm just happy to not limp after three games. Looking to come back. Switching balls. Soft hand. Here comes possible messenger. Not quite. Dave, I want to wish you a happy belated birthday now oh. that you can join this tour. <laughs> Oh, that's right. You are 50 now, yes, aren't you? Yes, I am 50. So are you strapping them up for Jackson? No. Um, I'm not strapping them up at all, to <laughs> be honest. No. Actually, I thought about bowling this week. I did earlier. I averaged 225 here this summer. I was really happy. And then I realized you had to bowl 14, uh, 14 games today. 
And I thought, my hand's going to be looking like it's been through a sausage oh, grinder. No whining allowed. I bullet. am not whining. I'm being honest. I'm fat. I'm old. I ain't got a prayer. All I'm good for right now is to put my money in and you guys go, thanks for the extra cash spot, Dave. We really, really appreciate it. Well, Maybe you could have gotten a check if I'd have bowled. That's true. Ooh. Oh, wow. You said shot fired? That's the second one. Oh, snap. <laughs> I missed three spares the second round. That's why I didn't get a check. I, I made a Facebook post about it. Spares count. And I will say, watching what we're seeing out there right now, we've stripped and re-oiled God, four times today, five times. One, two, three, four. This is a fifth strip and oil today on this pair. And this pair did not get used during uh, uh, during the round of eight. Uh, we used one pair over. So they're getting tighter. They're, you can see it getting tighter. You can see the oil pushing a little farther down the lane than, than what we've seen well, there, earlier. There okay. is a serious puddle in the middle part of the lane. Got a 22 pin lead right now for Lenny Borish, 56 in the third, 34 in the third for Brian Goebel, 22 pin lead. And I think Lenny right now is probably very happy to have a 22 pin lead with as bad as he's throwing the ball in right. the left lane. Well, the, mm -hmm. the left lane, he, even when the guys are practicing, Parker also said, the left lane is the trick lane. So we'll be seeing it come into play and it'll be de interesting to see who they have finish on that lane. Going to get back in the pocket. Yeah, solid Much better nine. shot. Better. Solid nine. On a longer pattern, Tom, correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the things that makes a longer pattern either a little bit more challenging sometimes or a little bit easier is how much energy the ball can store as it goes down the lane because it doesn't go into that roll till a little bit farther down the lane and doesn't lose its energy. That's why you see on a longer pattern sometimes solid nines, pocket ten, seven tens. Uh, we saw Jack Jurek in match play. Second round, second, uh, round of match play leave five solid nine pins. I mean right. clear solid nine pins uh, to lose, unfortunately to lose his match. Well, another thing that happens on a longer pattern, guys they perceive a longer pattern as a lot of oil. So they use a lot of surface, and that soaks up a lot of the oil in the front part of the lane. So when you see a lot of 10 pins, ball actually, even though it's a long pattern, lost some energy in the front part of the lane because as soon as that dull ball hits the lane, it starts taking oil off the lane. That looked like another ball change for a, a nine pin. Yep. That looks like he's went through three balls in basically three frames. Yeah, I want to tell you something about this particular pair. I saw Brian earlier a match on this pair on his way to the show and on the right lane he was getting his ball to hook a little bit sooner and he left back to back nine pins on the right lane and he made a two and two board move inside to catch some of the more oil and he struck out the rest of the way so i would anticipate goble now that he's left that nine pin will probably make a two and two left on the right lane and i predict that brian goble will probably throw nothing but strikes on the right lane well when brad angelo came over and he was throwing snowballs pretty much right down 15. So he was, I don't, and you look at it a couple ways. Is he trying to make his shot better when he comes on, or is he trying to take somebody's shot away when they're on that pair? And they say there's no defense in bowling. Still a 22 pin lead for Borish. Brian, one of the more deliberate players and a very slow approach. There we go. Much better shot. Believe it or not, that is his first strike of the match and only the third strike being thrown on this pair of lanes. I love his style. And by the way, everybody, Brian Goebel, he is 60 years old. He turned 61 October 15th. One of my favorite players to watch when I was growing up on the PBA Tour. And, of course, Goebel, that famous match against Norm Duke, 296 to 280 it's highest Peoria, losing Illinois. score yeah landmark lanes dave you're right yeah landmark lanes peoria illinois there got Wha seven out one of my hometowns <laughs> that was a big strike for lenny lenny still has a 22 pin lead a uh, little shaker that one definitely went farther which is what we were talking about see well, if he can execute here on uh the left lane now and get that double you you got to think that Lenny's rev rate is probably 
the lowest of the guys on the show. Him and Brian are probably close, but Brian's got such a different release. He's got a higher tilt, so it looks like his ball's revving more because of the tilt. But Lenny's just really firm through it and a lot of forward roll. Almost looks like he throws a full roller. Yes. Hesitation step. Actually, his power step, which is Great big, shot. big in bowling, the power step, doesn't really clear his foundation step. One, two, here. three, stutter, and go. and go. And that was in right about that 15 board that we were you were talking about, Tom, was where he's trying to play, maybe out to, you know, no farther out than 10. Yeah, I don't – realistically, you know, if you use the Kegel rule of 31 – uh, it's 45 foot pattern, 46 minus 31. It should be playing 15, right? Mm -hmm. Supposedly the break point, but we figure about 80% of that. So that should be like 12, 11. And ideally, that's supposed nice to shot. be the best break point. And that was as the lanes broke down because this was a no, no re oil tournament. We had 14 games bowled on them. So as the lanes dry out, that break point became more prevalent. And on the fresh, you see guys like. Brian being a lot straighter, he's out to like eight. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you're going to – you might see Chris Barnes out there. It all depends on how they break down. But if they if he has to go left, you're not going to see him getting outside of ten. By the way, he did strike on the right lane like I predicted. I think Goble's good on the right lane the rest of the way. I like his adjustment on the left lane, but he still trails by 22 pins. If both players were to strike out, Lenny would bowl 245, Brian 223. Biggest shot of the week for Brian right now. Step up, cut that lead down to tw 12 pins with a three-bagger. Looks good. Solid, Tim. Oh, roll, baby, roll, baby, roll, baby, roll, baby. There yeah, we go. Yeah. That is what we call a senior messenger. A little and bit on that a slow is the side. That is the championship lane's <laughs> specialty right there. That's the a Pony Express messenger. Yeah, look at Thunk. There we go. <laughs> that is the one hit in this house that we take – we take for granted is you we do get a lot of nice messengers on a solid tent pin. Do you even have a seven ten pickup this week? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Uh, Bob Learn. Yeah, Bob Learn. Well, he can throw it 150 miles an hour. Oh, that's because his feet go 150 mile an hour fast. Oh, those feet. Tom, we've seen a couple of different balls go down the lane for Brian Goble. Do you know what he what he switched to there? Uh is that, that black ball is, is that? a stealth. That is, that a, is stealth. a stealth. Okay. He's got a stealth, an Evo hybrid, and two Paragons down there, and every one of them are pinned down. I love pin down. I love pin up. I love pin down. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Marco Polo game, I guess. <laughs> pin down. Lenny to increase his lead back to 23 pins. With a strike here. That's inside a target. That was way right. inside a target for Lenny. Lenny's looking to hit that right range finder or tracer, as we like to call it on the telecasts. He was in between the two of them on that shot. And actually, he was closer to the, the inside one. He was more like 14 down. And for our, our fans who may not know, those range finders down lane, the two on the inside are at the 15 board, right. and the two on the outside are at the 10 board. And, and they're at like 42 feet. Yep. 40 and 42 feet, or 43. Good cover. That's a good point, Tom, talking about the distance of the range finders. This is a 46 feet in lane pattern, so there's even oil past the range finders right. on this Johnny Petraglia pattern. Exactly. Your box down lane to actually get the ball to hook is probably right around two feet past that range finder. That lane, that range finder, what lane, was it? Range, yeah, that thing. That thing Say down? that yeah. ten times fast. God, I love you. I love you when you. I think that's why. I'm not the only one that stutters. <laughs> I think that's why CDB calls it a tracer. Yeah, a tracer. Ah. It, it, it's a tongue twister. But that eight count is very costly because that now brings the match down to ten pins. So the advantage. There we go. There. Good comeback. The advantage, which was Borsch's, now it's an even match. Global can step up on the right lane and make it even. If my abacus worked correctly. Tom, take off your shoes. Count, count with your toes again. 223 possible for <laughs> Brian Goble. I, I can't even talk when you're next to me. <laughs> That's what your wife said. We have the possibility of, of a, a tie, tie. gentlemen. <laughs> we have a nice possibility of a tie. Big shot here to even the match. 
Oh, we got that oh, five pin out. Hall of Famer carry there, tripping now, out the five pin. He did not go nearly as wide with that one. He used the puddle on this. Watch how far. Remember, Tom, last time we saw him out to eight? Yeah, he crossed Ryan around 16, 17, and only got to 11 down yep. lane. Yep, so he's actually three boards in, and that ball hit softer. Yeah, oh, by far. So that more shows old. what the puddle does. Yeah, it's going to push the ball way down lane. Mm -hmm. And his tilt, since it almost looks like – I don't want to call it a spin, but it's what it looks like when most people see it. It looks like the ball is actually spinning going down the lane, but it's just a high tilt. That's what I have. I have high, t high tilt on all my equipment. Always had. No, seriously, that's true. True. I'm all high tilt. You're a spinner? I'm a spinner. Spin to win, baby. To take the lead for the first time in the match. See, you know what's... And he got so... Oh! Collapse. That was a oh. nose oh. 7 10 standing up, and they just fall to the side. Well, well, but he, watch this. Watch I talked about approaches. Look at his power step. His power step and Lenny's power step, the way they get to the line, are almost identical. He actually got that one wider. It came back harder and tripped the 4 7 10. So now what do you do here? I, I would take a re rack personally. I would regroup. I'd Take a little bit of time here. Brian's just going to take time. It looks like a little more deliberate here. Well, he is on his own. There, there was a pin in the gutter, so it, but he's not going to take a re -rec, but he is slowing down. And, and Brian is naturally slow anyway, so it's just people are going to think he's taking more time. I don't know if it's just that or it's just his natural technique. Firmer. Nice well, whatever shot. Whatever it was, it worked. Nice shot. Maybe he didn't have to take re re rack because that pin was in the gutter. Again, we see him down when he got a little bit right out to about that the That ball board. is definitely making the turn. I mean, he's got more surface on that. And you can see. And it was funny. Brian says, I'm doing my best job down here practicing trying to strap on it and hook it because normally his ball goes way straighter than that. Keep in mind that, that Lenny has to match what Goble does here. So this double here was huge. But it's also just as important to get this strike here. Right. Otherwise, Lenny Boris can go yeah. up and win the match. Yeah. Yeah. Lenny can strike out for the win if he doesn't strike here. 223 the max for both players. And that was the key thing with that eight count. That eight count brought, brought it into play. Needs them all. Yes. Brian nice Goble has done he, all that he, he, he can, can do. Exactly. He, he threw the ball back into Lenny's court, and Lenny has to perform right now to go to a one-ball roll-off. What a great finish for Goble. What a great ball change. That's why he's a Hall of Famer. In the fifth, he left that nine pin on the right lane. Well, you he called it. It was like you had ESP. Cheap. You figured that one out. He was already on this pair. I've played this video game before. I've seen it. <laughs> but if there's anybody you want to step up and throw the next three, ta -da 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 -da. Yeah. there he is. Lenny. Hardly ever, if never, gives up the pocket. Leads the first one. Oh, and he gets oh, he, a five pin yeah, out. Yeah, he got a crumbler. A little light mixer. This is you, great bowling, guys. You never see Lenny show any emotion. About the only emotion I've seen him see is when he won the U.S. Open. And he, he, he was actually in tears throwing his last ball because he had a one. And I didn't know if he's going to get that last ball off his hand. And Lenny also, also finished fifth in this, or uh, second in the center in 2015 here when he led the first tournament we had. And Brian Voss became our eventual winner on the cheetah pattern that year. Cheetah, well. We had the cheetah here, which played like poop. <laughs> <laughs> well, Did it wiggled really bad. Glad it's 46 that feet was 17 week. to 11. Nice. Wow. wow. Folks, Lenny Boris needs to go up on this next shot after he's thrown this critical double and get one more strike we'll have what? a tie and in the case it, of a tie tom how is it settled now this is a one ball roll off higher c gets to choose what lane he's going to start and the other bowler has to follow suit i'm still a fan of the two frame roll off one ball sometimes mm. clutch shots here that's what I mean. It's so important to Goldwold to get the strike on the final fill ball. 
got to imagine Lenny's going to hit it, hit the pocket here and knock them all down, right, guys? It, you know, skin to win. Skin to win, baby. 17 to 12. It's oh, light. Oh, he did uh, not get the seven pin outs. Okay, that oh. was – if we could have put that side by side, it w I called it 11 last shot. That was more like 12, and the ball just didn't see just enough did friction not down get lane. The friction. Brian Goble, Lenny in an ending in fifth position. Brian Goble going on to meet Brad Angelo on the next match. You, you taking a walk? You taking a walk there, boss man? Yeah, boss man is taking a walk. Boss gonna, man's taking a walk. He's going to go down and talk to Lenny and see what he had to say. And uh, Tom's going to go get a glass of wine? No, no, no. no. Oh, okay. Not right. yet. I'm ready. You're, You're ready? ready for I'm a glass ready. Of All right. Shall we fade out? We're not faded yet. We're not faded yet. We can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can hear Tom's breathing. You guys got me now? Yeah, we got you now. Got you now. That's my audio level, all right? Not too shabby, eh? Okay. They can't hear us out in TV land, right? Uh, they can. Oh, they're, yeah, we're yeah. on. We're, we're, live. we're still right. live. Time, Dave. Just making sure they can hear us out in TV Brian land. Brian Angelo coming on to take his, I believe, eight shots. Who? Brad I said Brian. Brian. Brad <laughs> Angelo. You got me talking silly now. You know what? I love my Tom Carter. Oh, Jesus. We used, to, we used to have so much fun together. We did back in the day. Well, it was one of our first shows. What, was 2016? 17, yeah. 17? When uh, Eddie won. Yep. Hey, guys, I'm here with Lenny Borish. Lenny finishes fifth this week. Lenny, uh, tell us a little bit about that match. What was going on out there? Well, they hooked a lot more than I anticipated. Um, so I just had to let it off my hand, you know, and a couple I grabbed. Um, yeah, I pulled a pretty good game. I can't complain. I made some shots when I needed to, but unfortunately, it came up a little bit short. But uh, it was a good week. But, yeah, left lane, left lane I got hooked on just a little bit more. Um, yeah, Brian Bull good. I mean, he made some pretty good shots. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of carry here or there. I you know, go either way. But, um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way it went, you know. But Maybe disappointed. <laughs> disappointed at the same time. Kind of a bummer. I haven't had much luck in this step ladders this the last few years. So, one week. But, uh, yeah, it was, good. it was a good week. It was a good week. Well, Lenny, every single week out here, it's like a Hall of Fame lineup that you got to go up against. It's Murderer's Row. If you had to pick a winner here tonight, what's your prediction? Who do you think is going to win? I kind of, kind of pulling for Chris. Um, I just think he deserves it. I mean, he's been bowling so well this year. Um, I, I gotta go, I gotta go, Chris or Parker. But then I, I got a good feeling about Goble too. You know, so it's anybody's game out there. But the way the lanes are playing, hooking a little more, and the carry is going to be a factor on our side. I mean, I'm, I was like, like a zone deeper than I've been all week, and it's totally surprised how much they hooked. Whether them guys burned them up a little bit in practice, but so I don't know if the the left side uh, might have a little bit better look there, or maybe they might open up more for the right side. So who knows, you know? But I have no idea. <laughs> it's gonna be a, it's gonna be some good matches coming up, though. I guarantee you that. Yeah. But uh, no, it's been it's been it's been a fun week, great year. I'm just uh, riding high. I'd like to grab another window before the year's <laughs> over. It'd be really cool. But if I keep keep putting myself in position to have a chance, you never know what can happen. You know that you know you know the pins fall sometimes. So, yeah. Absolutely. Well, Lenny Boris, congratulations on another good finish. All right, Michael. Thank you. There you go, guys. Well, Brad Angelo over here taking his shots. I, he's got his whole family here, and it's the first time he said in about 12 years that his family's been here to watch. So he's. I don't know if that's added pressure or excitement for him, but you know, it, it's it's a good thing they're here. You know. It's always nice to have your family behind you rooting. So Brad's going to be—he's uh, going to be a force to be reckoned with. He has been the whole season. But Lenny alluded to it that they hooked more, and I'm going to contribute to that. The way the guys came over and tried to break them down, they were using some serious surface right around 12 to 15. And I—you got to figure—are they trying to open up the lanes, or are they trying to shut them down for somebody else? And when we watched the round of eight. <coughs> Probably the best look on the right side was watching Brad Angelo. Brad seemed to have the best look attacking farther from the outside. He was out around the first arrow. He 
he was kind of piping it up nice and smooth. And so far we've watched him in practice be a little bit farther inside than what we what we saw on the last squad. Both shots have gone high, mind you. Well, he's been one of the guys that come over and practice and had some surface on the ball. But Brad's a student of the game. You know, he, he teaches at Bowl U. I mean, he's very good at lane breakdown and ball layouts and differentials and ball motion. So, I mean, I always think Brad Angelo, is, through this whole season, is a force to be reckoned with just the way he can read a lane. And that was a treat to, <coughs> to watch because he did have a 300 game. He did have a 300 game uh, during the the round of eight, and uh, it was uh, it was quite uh, quite impressive to watch. He got that nice half pocket slap ten out to to shoot it, but I liked the angle. Like I said, I liked the angle he was playing earlier. Let me see if he go back. See if he goes back outside. Nope, he's in. Uh, like I said, I th I think that he's he's definitely trying to break down his hook spot, and I don't know if he's trying to take away thinking ahead because you're always anticipating you're going to win and you're going to bowl for the title, and he, if that happens, he has to bowl Barnes and take away his shot. I mean, he can't do anything about Parker because Parker is his next match. Parker's going to be doing his own thing. But Brad's got several balls down there. They all basically have the kind of the same surface. They're all pin up. Uh, he's got a reality. He's got an alter reality. He's got a pair of uh, proton physics. Uh, it's just a matter of which one he figures is going to read the lane the right way. And the way he just practiced, you might think he's trying to burn up 15, and he's going to move right, just like you said, and play farther to the outside and use what oil's there. So this will be an interesting match. Brian, He's trying to force Goebel out of his comfort zone. I think this is going to be an interesting match. Yeah, we should be one, two, three guys across the way. All right, well, guys, here we go. Uh, you know, you guys are, I heard you guys breaking down what you guys were, were thinking here. I think the key for Brad is we know Brad has a really good look on the fresh, and as the lanes start to transition a little bit, Brad can get a little squirrely ball reaction. We've already had, you know, two right-handers take to the lanes. It'll be interesting to see what Brad does when he comes into this one here. I did go down and talk with Brian and Jeff Johnson in between the matches, and they were throwing a, a Paragon over on the practice lane, and they like the ball reaction there. This one seems to be a little bit more... Uh, oil down lane, didn't want to finish as much as we saw early in the match. They're going to stick with the stealth. So the stealth being a symmetrical ball should technically give you a little bit more pop on the back end. The Paragons being asymmetrical, picking up a roll a little bit earlier, especially with the amount of surface that he has on him. Stutter step and through. That's the leverage at the line. It's kind of funny from the old days to now the power steps become more and more prevalent. You see stutter steps, kind of hop steps. Uh, you didn't see it back in the old day schools. There was more of a traditional And approach. Brad went outside. Brad literally playing up 10. He's trying to burn up the spot in practice at 15, take that shot away from everybody. I'm looking he, at the range finder, looking at about eight off yeah, the end of the yep. pattern. So he's playing, how tight is that? He's crossing 10, taking it to eight. I bet that's what we're, he was we saw so successful in the round of eight was watching him play that line. And I think if he can stay out there, if he can, if the reaction stays out there for him, we're going to see some good scores from, from that. Is it going to be, will it take away from Brian's break point or can Brian shift slightly in around it? Well, so. Brian's game that's going to be tough to beat. Brian's game, if he forces Brian left, not that Brian can't play left, but with that high tilt, it makes it a little bit harder. You really need some really fresh back ends to make that ball turn the corner. He could trap Brian up. And they say there's no defense in bowling. Well, not in yesterday's game, but <laughs> I think in today's game. And these balls are so stinking powerful. They could... 
you got to figure out how the ball is going to read the lane and where it's going to read at. If you can take somebody else's shot away from them, you know, so be it. I haven't seen it, but maybe Mike has. So I'm a match ahead. But oh. oh, tripping out the nine. That's what, what a break like that see. is. Good, good shot. Have you ever seen anybody that's going to bowl a left-hander throw balls up the left side of the lane, Mike? Yeah, I have. Uh, I've seen it on occasion. Have you? Yeah, on occasion, but uh, not too often. Simonson. There's a, there's a lot of thinking going on when that happens. Oh boy, yeah. I mean, Simonson did it in Kokomo on the show. Simonson. He wasn't sure if he was going to go. Remember, Mike? Mm -hmm. Wasn't sure if he was going to go this way or that way. Wow. He's a unique case for sure, though. Yeah, but he can throw a backup ball like yeah, unbelievable. He's got a title. Exactly. On, he's got a national yeah. title on the tour throwing a backup ball against Matt Sanders. Global going for a three-bagger. Ooh, and looking nice. <clears throat> I think both bowlers have a nice look right now. I think it's Just it kind of shows the, the variety in, in our players. You see – Global moving in a little bit. Yeah, he crossed 15 right there. Yeah, he's yeah, moving in. There's clearly two zones to the pocket right now, maybe more. <laughs> you you got Brian going left, which is kind of odd to a certain extent, and you got Brad going right. Brad's – oh <laughs> – Oh, messenger to the nine, but a little slow. Brad's approach is a little – if you see where he's standing, which you do, you would think that he's playing the gutter. But that drift left that he has, probably 15 boards. Yeah, and by the way, that, that shot rolled right over the right range finder. Yeah. His strikes on the right lane were two boards right yeah. of it. That's how good these guys are. They can hit a dime <laughs> down lane every uh, time. Well, you got to figure out how many games. And we're talking about the senior tour. Week after week after week. I mean, they're, with, with the practice round and the pro-ams and all the bowling, they're bowling at least 70 games a week. You know, that's just that's a, a bunch. That's almost a league season for a person bowling one night a week. That's why I bought all kinds of stock in Jared Hall. <laughs> I mean, that's seriously one of the reasons why I didn't bowl this year, Tom, was I didn't feel I was ready. Mentally, I'm fine, but physically for 14 games today, potentially, and then another four, I'm like, I'm not ready for that yet. It's a lot of games. Much better. Much better shot. That was 8-9 at the end of the pattern and firm. It's almost, I talk about power steps and leverage all the time on the show. And you, you look at Brad Angelo, his power step and his timing step is in his second step, it looks like, compared to everybody else's in their foundation step. What I call the foundation step, the power step right before the slide. 11 pin lead currently for Brian Goebel. Four bagger puts him up 21 quickly. He's got a nice roll out there. He also rolling it right over the, the right tracer. And you can definitely see the tilt that we were talking about earlier, Tom. It's just so smooth right now. Look at how nice yeah. and smooth well, that's going into the pocket. And, and <laughs> tilt, you, you can see his thumb. When, when that ball was rolling down the lane, the, his thumb set up at, at one point. And that's what you can see tilt going down the lane. It's like the ball on some balls, you see him making a defined for a right-hander, right to left move. And a, as a high tilt player, you see that set up and it just, it's kind of a smooth arc. I mean, and, and as a player, if you can have both releases, you got the world because no matter what the lanes throw at you, you can do what you need to do. Going for the front five. Beautiful shot. Ryan has figured it out. Strader is a little bit greater on that inside for him right now. He's not looping it nearly well, as far you know, as the guys was. were scared of the left lane. and he, He's making the left lane look like there's no problem with it. And you can see where we were seeing him earlier out around 8 to the range runner. He's now in around 10-11. Well, if you watch his break point to the pocket, Brian's, it's a smoother 
transition off the spot than some of the other guys. You can see a more defined, what I call right to left. Everybody says different terminology. That's 10. That was 9, 10 down lane, and that was dead flush. Perfect shot. And that's where Mr. Angelo needs to stay is in that area. I mean, obviously, now that's a cut his lead down to 21. 21. Yeah, max well, score being 379. Yeah. yeah, so it's 21. <laughs> we put that at 21. Absolutely, Dave. Yeah. I, we can do the math on that one. We're just, we're just, okay, just I, saying. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> I can count to five really well. All right, kids. Stop I will, it, Dad. I, I will put away your bunk beds and let you guys have your own rooms. <laughs> big, big shot for Brad right here. Big, big shot. Cut it to 11. I'm constantly watching down lane at the tracer. Is he going to be just right of it? If so, it'll be in the pocket. Good shot. Got Ooh, that 10 pin out. That was an 8 10. You it see that? An that was a slow motion. Fall and they both go way. to the left. That's a little scary. Brian's got it for us. Brian Kane, our producer tonight. Look at this. Doink. Look at that. They're giving you extra money for this. You're doing a great job. I will say, Brian's done a nice job on the show so far tonight. But every time we say that, poof, there we go. <laughs> no. Well, the first problem is you let me on. No. We've been looking forward to this one. This is stop 12 of 13 on the PBA 50 tour this year. Our last two stops be oh. at your places, Dave. Johnny yeah. Campos <laughs> posted, is Brian Goble f going for an Andy Vera Papa? You know what that is, right? That's true. Actually, that is an Andy Vera Papa for yeah. Goble. Lat back that six. Is. Back six is six. Andy Vera Papa 300. Yeah. Andy always said it makes no difference as long as you throw 12 in a row. I'm so impressed with the accuracy here. Brian, 16 to 11. And it's just snapping that 10 pin out perfectly. And to talk to Brian, he's just so mellow. He's just like, mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm just going to get up and do what I do, and hopefully they fall down. And I remember his first win in 1991 at Golden Pin Lanes in Tucson, Arizona. It was an awesome match when he came from the fifth spot. Looking for the front seven. Oh, he doesn't get prettier than that. Well, he's making it look like you're playing league. He's making it look easy right now, definitely, because I still suck Are we league. bowling on the same pattern? I'm going to put out a special request to the folks at Brunswick that own the track brand. We've got this stealth bowling ball that, that Brian is using. I remember Brian using the nuke back in the day. Oh. Hey, folks at Brunswick and track, <laughs> how about we bring back that nuke? Just for Brian. He, he, he's a big track guy. He likes this stuff. I know he does. Probably the biggest shot of the week now for Brad. To well, stay with the pace. Oh, that was outside of the range finder. It sure was. On both yeah. sides. Yeah, it was about six. Yes. He got that right off of his hand, and it never read. He hit the, he actually hit the out-of-bounds that we talked about earlier. Yep. There, folks, there truly is a little bit of push and some out-of-bounds here. Yeah, that, that and this spare has been an absolute bear this week. Well, yeah, because you want to hook at it, but there's that puddle in the middle. It might not get there, but if you hit the track, it's going to hook too much. Yep. Or Other than that, it's pretty easy. Or we've seen a lot of players not carry out that back pin. He's hooking it at it. And that's what we were afraid of. Yeah, that is not the thing you want to do right now when somebody's throwing the front seven at you. Nope. That's. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Brad there, still but still. two forty-three. <laughs> I didn't say it. I know. I did. <laughs> two forty-three for Brad is left. So the magic number for Brian Goble is two forty-four. And like I said, that that spare is an absolute bear this week because you just weren't sure how to shoot it. The, probably the I, best way to shoot it, Tom. I would shoot it off the left. I'd shoot it straight at it if I could. I think I just hit the reset because I know I get it. <laughs> Can the guys in the truck cue the Norm Duke U.S. Open sparing the bucket for us? I'm just kidding, but that's the that's the best way to pick See if Brad can come back. Much better shot. Yeah, that's, that's where he yeah, needs so to stay. Now he, possible 243. <clears throat> Obviously, Brian's got this in hand. He, at the rate he's going, he will shoot 300. Damn, I got to pull out another $100 bill. 
Don't you triple it in a stepladder, Dave? I thought it was like a thousand if you shot <laughs> three hundred. <laughs> Let me tell you something, babysitter precious is right now. <laughs> I could have swore you said that earlier. Somebody shoots three hundred on the show, it's a thousand bucks. What's that memory medicine you take again? <laughs> Viagra? <laughs> yeah. I was just trying to help Brian out. I know. Come on, Brian. One more, baby. 16 to 11. Oh, pretty shot. Well, Brian Goble's feeling it tonight. You can just tell. He's very he's, confident. And he talked all week about that. He's been so comfortable. And he's, we had a conversation. I think you had the same type of conversation. It's like he took a couple of years off, really didn't bowl at all. Said he felt just wanted to come back and do it. Brian, every time he's come out, has been a force to be reckoned with. Uh, you don't get in the Hall of Fame without being a quality player. And just because you take time off doesn't mean you don't know how to bowl. And he had other things going on, and now he's got some time to come out. You know, The senior tour is kind of a, a hit and miss thing for a lot of guys. Some guys can be out more than others. Front nine. That uh, was uh, wide at the break, break point. point. He got that at eight. And it was a great run, but that wasn't the same shot. No. He definitely lost it at the bottom. You can see it, Tom, right there. Lost it at the bottom, and it's squirting to the right, right off of his hand. Yeah, he got it to eight. And the ball, ball just doesn't read. You can't really cross 16, 17, get it to eight, unless you got a whole boatload of hand in it. 267 now potential for 265. Okay, so, so if Brad Angelo strikes out, he bowls. 244. 243, excuse me, 243. So that would mean that Brian Goble would need nine on two balls to, to advance. So no Greek church and miss them all. Correct. No Don Janello, 1982. Still a chance. Oh, oh, hit it. So now it's kind of a mood point. It at, is. At, at this point. Brad Angelo is going to finish fourth. He is our number four guy. And Brian. a shout out to Brad, by the way. I mean, Brad has bowled so good this year. He, he got our first win. He kicked off the season as top <laughs> one with a win. This is his fifth championship round appearance. I don't think he, I mean, obviously he wants to win, but the biggest thrill for him is his family was here to watch. Oh, absolutely. And that's, that hasn't happened for him, he said, in 12 years. So, you know, big shout out for him. And I got to meet his wife and his, his two daughters earlier so i mean it's exciting when your family gets to come and, s and hang out with you it's a nice treat brad is uh, a fierce competitor on the lanes but he's also a very emotional guy he also had a very emotional visit at wrigley field a couple weeks ago as well reminded him of being there with his father and of course having his family here this week you're absolutely right tom carter and we will probably see brad here next week well yeah i on the, on the good side, he's not going to be at the PBA 60. <laughs> well, you may have a prayer then. Uh, yeah, exactly. I'm going to have to start a 70 tour for you. You know that, right? I'm going to have to start a 70 tour for you. Next. Wait, I'm not I'm still petitioning for the 40 tour. <laughs> but yeah. interestingly, did you see Brad? Now he's moved in twice. Yeah, with the gym. With the gym. Just trying something. I think he's going, did I miss something here? But I don't think he did. I just he had that one Aaron shot. He just missed it off the, at the bottom of the swing. If you're just joining us, Brian Goble is going to advance to take on our number two seed, Parker Bone the third. That is going to be an awesome match. And the so winner, winner of that match takes on Chris Barnes, our number one seed. So now here we go. We do have literally PBA Hall of Famer against PBA Hall of Famer against PBA Hall of Famer, clear to the sh title of the show. So this. One heck of a finish for tonight. 213 for Brad Angelo. You're done for today? No, no, I'm here. Okay. okay. You know, okay. Goble going to switch balls here on the fill, try to gather yeah. some information he, he, he. from the lane. Well, you need information going forward because his his the only thing that's going to change on his side is him because he's bowling Parker Bowen. I see Jeff Johnson coming in, one of his ball reps. Yep. Tom Carter also a ball rep out here for Brunswick. Jeff Johnson. Jeff had a great run this week also. 
and, and it's always good to get information from a guy that bowled on the same condition and patterns that you did, and especially when you bowled as good as Jeff did. Obviously, he's seeing the same things that probably Brian and Parker are going to see. Wow. On that shot, Brian moved way in, almost crossed 20 just to see something different. Brian Goble just wrapping up, possible 255. He picks up the spare. Mike Flanagan going to go out and get an interview from Brad Angelo, see what he had to say about the lanes, the lane transition. And folks, you'll be watching the warm up of Chris Barnes will be coming over, Parker Bone getting some shots in, getting ready for our next match, Brian Goble. Parker Bone. Definitely going to be a good one, Tom. Hey, Tom, I'm down here with Brad Angelo. Brad finishes in our championship round here. Just got defeated by... Brian Goebel. Brad, uh, tell us a little bit about the week for, for yourself, having the family here as well. I know it was a big deal. It was an unbelievable deal. I had been asking uh, my wife for the last couple of years now uh, if during the summer she could take a week off with the girls and, and come out and, and watch. And that week finally happened. So, uh, and it was nice to be able to bowl 300 while they were here watching too. So, uh, great week. I'm, I, I'm not upset at all. You've had a great year out here. You, you got the win, obviously, in week number one. This is week 12 already. We got one more week out here. Uh, how would you sum up your season so far? It's been another great season, a uh, solid season. You know, there's there's so many people that, that are out here. Uh, you look at those banners that hang up on the lanes every single week. I, I've said it all summer long, but uh, our top fives, step ladders they've been pretty impressive um you look at those three guys standing right there right now there's three hall of famers right there i mean i i'm i, I was far and away the least accomplished bowler on the step ladder and i feel like i've had a pretty solid career so uh you know these guys out here it it's it's really a shame that we can't get on tv at least uh you know something i mean it's great watching the women right now while we're while we're watching or while we're bowling our finals, but I just wish there was a way that that, that the, the greatness out here could continue to be recognized. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Well, Brad, we we'll wish you good luck uh, next week. Maybe you get bookends out here. <laughs> That'd be nice. That'd be really nice. And thanks for all you guys do too. You guys do a great job. So thanks for all your time and effort and getting here and duct tape all over the floors, taping the wires down and trying to do the best job you can. Um, so thank you very much for a great summer. Thank you, Brad. Good luck next week, buddy. That's Brad Angelo, Tom. That's why he's one of my favorites out here. He may be a little rough around the edges when he's competing and a fierce competitor, but once the, the bowling's over, he is about the greatest human being you may ever meet. Well, I, I'm quite sure that uh, Brad has the ability. Obviously, he does that. But uh, to make it bookends, like you, you said, that. There's no doubt as many shows as he's made and how close he's been that he could make another show. Well, he led, he led last year in Jackson. Well, ne next week in Jackson is our last PBA 50 event, but we're still in Jackson for a PBA 60, and our final event will be at Wayne Webb's Columbus Bowl uh, for a PBA 60 event. You know what I'm proud of with that? What's that? And I was the one that founded the PBA 60, having the first one. Well, uh, in thank that you. 2014. And for the PBA 60s, we now have, this year, we had three. We had uh, the Super Senior Classic yep. right before the Masters. Uh, your tournament, which is next week at Jack 60. And then Wayne is having one. So this is the first time that we've had three PBA 60 tournaments in one season, which is uh, good for the old guys because the old guys still like to bowl. Exactly. And you know, it's as as we 
get older, as I have now turned 50, and things hurt more, and it takes a lot well, longer know, to get loose. That's an understatement. You know, some of the, you know, if you look back, Tom, you know, 15 years ago when you when you first came out, you know, on the 50 tour, right? It was a different game for you then. Oh yeah, because it was easier to compete. But as you get a little bit older, you 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 have to get a little bit more accurate. Yeah. You have to get a little bit more straighter. But some of these younger kids that come up into the 50, like Chris Barnes and Brad Angelo, they can still open the lane up. Oh, they. I mean, when I came out. I hooked the ball more than and there was the Sutars that were out here. Yep. And, you know, uh, it was just a different realm back then. And for four years, I had a great run. So I seen in the chat, Mike Littleton asked a question for Tom. What is the question? I, I'm curious. I'd $12, like to, 12 shots. I'd like to know. $12. Tom, why does Brad move over on global shots. spot? That was the question. Why doesn't Brad I'm Brad move over cheap. to Goble's spot? I believe was the question for you, Tom. Oh, I'm cheap. You're thrifty. Uh, good. I honestly believe what? with Brad's rev rate, uh, that ball would have hooked earlier. Brad would have had to move left of where Brian was playing, which he could have done. Uh, he definitely has that ability, but I think he figured that he had a, a better chance of playing. What he, he was almost creating a little bit of hold for himself. And, and the thing that hasn't happened, which I was surprised, I am surprised that one of the players didn't really take urethane and throw down the lane and to create even more hold down to the pocket. But, you know, that's that's kind of hindsight. But Yeah, now Michael clarifying, he's saying, you know, once the match was over, Brad moved in to Goebel's line. Why would he do that with a different ball? Just to see what he might have had, just to think about later, maybe? Yeah, but I, that, that that's always an option. But we also saw Chris Barnes play deep, deep, deep inside like that as I, well. I think what has happened, uh, and it's actually, I think, to Chris Barnes' favor, they've opened up the shots so much around 15 and down lane. Chris will probably be inside of fourth arrow, taking it to that break point. And I said earlier, I, I <clears throat> Chris is new to the senior tour, but and I've, and I've got to – know Chris a little bit better but to me today it looked like he, Chris can play all parts of the lane but he just looked very comfortable with what he was doing uh, today being able to go from left to right and just let the ball just read back to the pocket somebody said I needed a frog tournament yeah they did Well, guys, this one here is super special for me. Um, two guys I grew up watching, Bowling Hall of Famers, as you guys mentioned. But uh, Parker Bone has the opportunity to get a chance to bowl for another title if he can get through Global and take on Barnes. It would be a special moment tonight for Parker if he could get there. It would be five titles for him here on the PBA 50 Tour this year with one week to go. He also won five titles. When he was player of the year on the PBA Tour, he would be able to match that here tonight. It would also be very special for us here at Championship because Parker won in 2017, 2021. He's a defending champion. He would be the first time, three-time winner in one of our centers. And uh, I was uh, a little saddened with the round of 18, the round of eight, having Pete Weber and oh. Parker Bohm bowl each other because both of them are two-time champions in my house. Oh, that and would have been nice. Yeah. It, so it was very, very challenging to, because I'm not supposed to pick a favorite. So it becomes very challenging when you've got two two-time winners, and you'd love to see someone break that and get the, their third title. With me, anyways. With you. With me. Right now, I I, I think Parker might have his hands full with Brian Goble. Brian, 16. See, he was he can't right do in that, that range finder. He was right down lane. And, and, the mistake he, and the mistake he made after having the front seven last game was getting it right of the range finder. He, he lost that ball at the bottom. Just blah with the release. The, the reason being, 
it is so freaking cold in here <laughs> <laughs> that there are icicles hanging off people. Now, and I'm his hand <laughs> probably shrunk. Now, I will say this: if you would like, I will go and I will turn the pro. I will turn the air conditioning off for a split second, and I guarantee you, they will no longer slide. <laughs> That's why you keep it so cold. Oh my God! I hardly ever wear a jacket <laughs> at all, and it is. It's igloo weather in here. I think it's perfect. I, I think, Dave, I think you picked up on something pretty good here. I think Goble coming out of what you would call a commercial break, he sat for a while. He just came out. He's made a bad shot. Bad shot. Just basically missed it at the bottom. I think this one will be right back in the pocket. And I was wrong, and that was the Bo Burton kiss of death. Well, that could have been an overcorrection if – there was a issue with the way he threw it on the, the previous shot. He overcorrected on this one, grabbed it a little bit, and now we got Tom. Uh, how should he shoot this spare <laughs> with the reset button? Again, this thing is uh, nine ways to miss it and one way to pick it up. Oh, oh, and the, I thought he missed that. I thought I he chopped it. it. Too. So Goble's good for you know the front seven against Angelo, but. Now Parker Boney gets open spare. How does Parker get it so easy? Well, you know, it's br we said it a hundred times already tonight, but, you know, Brian hasn't been out here for a while, and I, I can't imagine it would be, but maybe it is a little bit. You're bowling Parker Bone, who's been on oh. an unbelievable roll, and it could be a little bit of nerves there, you know, trying to make quality shots, you know. You, you can't give anything to Parker because he's going to take it and run with it. He got a nice break there from leaving the 3-9-10 originally to knocking it down to just the three pin. Well, Parker's match against Pete, I mean, Pete had a chance in the previous round to make it to the show. To the Par mark. Parker, literally that last game, I mean, he had shots that were kind of going everywhere, kind of like he lost it. I, I'm still not sure what happened in that match, but, you know, that was kind of a shot that happened in the previous match. He just missed it. 11-pin lead for Parker through two frames. And you and I both sat there with our jaws open when he missed that 10-pin. Well, he missed a 7 and missed a 10, and I was like, what? Yeah, he told me after that that it was feel issues. He was having an issue with getting out of the ball at the bottom of the swing. Just snuck by Weber. All Weber needed was a mark. And yeah. he threw the worst ball he threw all afternoon. Uh, he got a little slow, and he definitely grabbed it, got a whole handful of it, went right through the face. Yeah, Weber left the 3-4-6 when he needed a mark against Parker, and Parker was able to make the show. Parker doing what he does, 10 in the pit. Parker was worried about the left lane. He, he he thought he had the right lane dead to rights, and he goes, I just need to figure out the left lane. He goes, it's either going to be strike or ball change. Yep, flat ball set. change, guys. Ball change. So he's got two of those balls down there. It just is he throwing the two and three each pin or the three and three each pin? So what do you think? i got to ask this to Mike. Two and three-eighths pin to three and three-eighths. What do you think the motion difference should be? Very subtle. I, I think very subtle. I mean, I think the surface is going to make a bigger difference. Are they both the same surface? Both same surface. Six inches earlier hook, maybe. So which Ooh. one's going to hook earlier? I, I beca Because I, 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 as a ball rep, you try to get into your player's head and learn what they're thinking so you can help them out with decisions. So the pin down is supposed to hook earlier, right? Right. They're, they're all pinned down, at two and three-eighths and three and three-eighths. In my opinion, I, I would have thought the two and three-eighths would have been smoother and rounder. The three and three-eighths basically a little bit, you know, little bit snappier. A little bit snappier. Close, closer you put your, your – your pin to your positive axis point, the more it's controlled down lane, right, right Tom? But Brian sees them opposite. Really? Yeah. 
Well, that was a great shot there. That ball definitely turned the corner at the back end. I just don't know which one he's throwing because they both are identical. <laughs> Except for the pin distance. Oh. Oh, that could have been real ugly. That looked like 5 seven, ten standing there for a second. Potentially here. it was. That ball definitely hit... Uh, but a second time he's yeah. come in light on lane 30. 38. He's got a collision down there and, and a dark web. So we got symmetrical and asymmetrical. And I really thought he was going to throw the dark web because he thought that would give him a little bit more. That he's thrown that collision a lot. And, and he's got a ton of surface on that thing. But depending on what he did on his side of the lane, he could have burned it up a little bit. There we go. So the lane that he was worried about, the left lane, this is the one he's striking on. He goes, I got the right one dead to rights. But now it looks like <laughs> things have changed. They flip-flopped. 12-pin lead right now for Parker Bone the third. Brian needs to step up here in the fifth, double up, cut that lead down to two pins. Two pins would be a nice cut. See if he uh, kind of stays a little bit farther inside with this one, Tom. We need to be have him around that range finder about 10, 11. Well, he's 16, 17, and that was there we go. 11. <coughs> that ball definitely so, rolls so up a little bit, a uh, little bit earlier. So the point of the story is, don't get the ball right of the far marker down lane, that range finder, tracer, whatever you want to call it. If you get right of it. Bad juju. Bad juju. I want to talk about some good juju for a minute. Dave, I want to thank you for hosting this one. Dave Small joins us in the booth with Tom Carter and Mike Flanagan here. I want to thank you for hosting this event and all the events that you've hosted, but I also want to compliment you on the masking units you have out there. I really like the retro throwback, but also it's kind of modern feel. I really like this a lot. Well, thank you. So who designs all your stuff? Do you do that? No, actually, actually I design a lot of them, but uh, Classic Products and Fort Wayne does them for me. Whoa, that was, that was left of the rangefinder, but I'm not sure where he crossed at the arrows. That just checked up early. It sure did, and we didn't uh, need to give uh, an opportunity like this to Parker. Well, that could be. I mean, if he got a little bit right in the front part of the lane, that could have been where some of the guys, when they came over, and he's got a chance. Oh, oh what a shot. What a, that was incredible. That's awesome. Well done. The 4 seven, ten. Smooth as silk. Look at that shot. Just clips it, and boom. He'd have made the 4 six, seven, ten if oh everyone was standing Lord. there. Hey, was that an old red turbo? No. <laughs> that That is an attitude control. That's a urethane ball. That is awesome. And it's even pinned down. <laughs> that was an incredible shot staying And you can gain me. momentum doing that, too. That's almost as good as throwing a triple from a momentum standpoint. Big shot for Parker. He's been light. This time... Yeah, Seven that ball is getting out to like 5-6 down lane. I would say almost identical hit. I know it, it was a little little higher on the pocket, but not by much, guys. It was probably five, 6 down lane. 5 was second last to fall. He either has got to move just a, a pinch, and I mean a pinch left with his feet and keep his eyes the same spot. He's got to get that ball higher in the pocket, or he's got to switch to that dark web, which might give him a little bit more back in. Got a heck of a match here. Five pin lead right now for Parker. And sometimes when your opponent makes a big split conversion like that, that you weren't expecting. Yeah, that kind of could. That sometimes can take a little wind out of your sail. Yeah, that could throw you into shock mode. Parker's been liking lane 37 so far. 
Parker possible 239 if he takes it off the sheet. Oh, oh. trips the eight pin up. <laughs> slow, slow nine pin. Yeah, I don't know if the move for Parker is like one and one Two right, closer to the head pin. I don't know. If you know his game best, Tom. 234, 239. I, I, well, he, Jason Couch earlier, all of his moves were right, and he was actually kind of circling the pattern a little bit. And at one point, Parker was doing the same thing. So he could either, you know, we can sit back here and analyze all day long. I mean, most of us think that maybe he needs to move just a pinch to the left, get the ball higher in the pocket, but now you're getting closer to the out of bounds. Or you get a bigger ball in your hand. And that was right at marker down lane, and you sure don't do that after you just picked up that s split. Yeah, in my opinion, guys, and you know I like to like to give my opinion on, on these things. I think Brian Goble, I think that Dave Small was, was accurate on the first shot. It fell off his hand. It wasn't a good shot. Tom Carter, I think you were right on the second shot, saying that he overcompensated for it. Then he switched balls. I, I'm not so sure that he needed to move out of that ball. Only thought he had it. I still think he should have stayed with that other ball. I like the reaction I saw down lane. That one seems to be going farther than the other one. That ball, ladies, cat seems to be going a little bit farther and not gripping like we were seeing. Uh, it, it's the stealth. Definitely, so I, I definitely like the stealth motion. I, I, I would like to see him do what he did earlier, just grab a handful of it and, and make it turn the corner. Uh, maybe that's the wrong analogy, but he went he, back to it. He went back to the stealth. <laughs> He is in that zone where Brad Angelo came over with a snowball and threw it between, say, 13 and 17 right down through there. Did Brad Angelo wreck his line? Yeah. I, I, That's the whole thing. Did he, Brad Angelo? He's moved into that zone, and everything is just its reading too early. It's got to stay out. Oh, yes. Oh. Oh, Put that's on <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's putting on a trick shot exhibition okay. right now. Welcome to Spare Shooting 101 by Brian Goble. And that's why you're a Hall of Famer, because you can slide it and kick it and make it work. Unbelievable. I guess that's a now good commercial made the for the attitude. attitude. Yeah, there's a commercial right there. <laughs> <laughs> Having trouble picking your spares. Buy this ball, you will, <laughs> yeah, buy this ball, you will pick up your spares. Throw the, th through the ball like, you know what? Watch. <laughs> so what's Parker going to do here? I mean, the last two times, the five has fallen out late. Leaves the 10 pin. So is we can't see what he's crossing just because of where he's at. But that was definitely right down lane. He didn't get it as far. That was over the tracer down lane. When he was barely tripping the five, he was out to six, seven. So he did what you said. It maybe moved right, or at least he just tightened up the lane. Yeah, one and one right would have been the move for me for Parker, covering him all season, right over that range finder, as you said, Tom. That gives a double for Parker, 239 possible, 201 possible for Brian Goble. Remember the winner gets Chris Barnes. And Chris has led the last two tournaments. Three bagger for Parker and that is pretty much kind of sealing the deal here. And we have another rematch of Parker and Chris Barnes. We do, and Parker's beat him two to nothing so far this year. Last year it was Hess had Barnes number. This year Parker Bone has had Barnes number. And guess what? Parker Bone, guess who he rooms with? Tom Hess. <laughs> Tommy Hess. We miss you this week, Tom. Tom nursing an injury this week. He'll be back next week, hopefully. Yeah, I seen a post that uh, he's practiced 10 games and he feels good. Uh, Going to give it a little bit more rest, but he might see him in Jackson. Still a great week for Brian Goble. He was able to win some matches, which he hadn't done in a long time, he said. Feels good to be back out here competing. He's going to finish third this week. Yeah. Best he can do at this point now is 190. So Brian, like you said, will finish third. And we will have a rematch of last week. Chris Barnes, Parker Bone the third. And I really, truly think those shots 
that Brad went in and played. Might have had something to do with what we just watched. Yeah, when Brian tried to move in, he found more friction. And then he tried to go around it and no recovery. So did, here's the question of the day, did what Brad just done, mm -hmm. burn that up, did he make Chris Barnes' shot better? Or worse. Or worse. Okay, you got to figure the momentum's with Bone going into this one with squirrely ball reaction. That's why it's going to be important for everybody at home and for us to watch all of Chris Barnes' practice shots. Because Chris is the only player, I think, in this whole qualifying round, from start to finish, basically has thrown a pearl ball. Everybody else has thrown surface. Yep. Hey, I got to get this in here. Parker wanted me to give a shout out here tonight to his son, Brandon, who turns 18 today. And he's heading off to Mount Mercy College to bowl for that great collegiate program led by Andy Dirks and Sidney Brummett. So happy birthday, kid, from your dad, Parker. Brandon's a great kid. He's had an unbelievable youth career so far, and we wish him all the best at Mount Mercy University as he goes on to join the bowling team there. Turns 18 today, Brandon Bone. Happy birthday from dad. It's hard to believe that he is 18. I remember when... Parker first, first coming out, and both of those kids were just squirts, <laughs> sitting on the steps watching Dad bowl. Parker finishing this up. Looks like he's going to shoot, you know, 230 something. He just has to put the numbers on the board. And we're going to go on to the next match, which is going to be Chris Barnes, tournament leader for the last two weeks against Parker Bone. Mike Flanagan is going to be on the call. He'll be talking to Brian Goble just to see what Brian's seen out there and what happened on that transition. How about a nice event for PBA Hall of Famer Brian Goble. Congratulations, Brian. Great tournament for you. Hope the ball goes on. Congratulations to Parker. Hey, uh, Tom, I'm here with uh, Brian Goble. Brian, first of all, great week. You won some matches. How about that? <laughs> Feels good. Feels good. I, you know, I, I just got a little lost there, and you don't have a game, so you either find it or you don't. So Parker had a good look. I think once he just relaxed a little bit more, it was easy for him. But uh, I just lost it a little bit and couldn't find it. So, But, yeah, I mean, third place, What? I'm an old man. I'm happy to get third. I'm the oldest guy on the show. So that's a good feeling. Yeah, Brian, certainly uh, really impressive out there. Obviously, you bowled a great game against Brad Angelo. You found something with the ball change, with the stealth bowling ball. We saw you come out of the commercial break, so to speak, and you come back over to the pair. You went light on the right lane, then you went high on the left lane, and we were wondering if maybe you made a couple of bad shots and you made a ball change that maybe you shouldn't have made. What was the idea behind the ball change? Well, the, the shot on the right lane was a bad shot. It, slipped, it fell off my hand. I, I just lost it off my hand. So that was a bad shot. I wiped that one away. I threw the one on the left lane pretty good, and it hooked Please. through the nose. So, okay, that's not a big deal. And I thought, I thought the other ball revs up but goes a little longer, so I decided to go with it on the other lane, and I think I, I think I struck. And then on the other lane, I can't remember what I did on it, but I think it still went high again. But I thought that ball would work, but it just didn't look like it was going to knock 10 down. Like, you know, you didn't have much area. didn't have much room to miss, and you get a game. And so, unfortunately – just like I said, it just maybe you start trying too hard or whatever. And every shot I missed on was a split. So, you know, you just kind of grateful I picked up two splits. Well, lucky I shot 160. It was a pretty ugly game. So, hey, that's all right. Started in fourth, moved up a spot. What can I say? I'm, I'm wealthy now. Yeah, I think you are wealthy. And <laughs> one follow up for you here, Brian, is when you bowled, you know, on the tour, on the regular tour, the, did the lanes transition as much as they transition in today's game? Yes and no. There were weeks where they did, and there were weeks where they didn't. There were, you know, if they transition in a way that you know how they're moving and you can move with them, and then then that's well, the problem. If they transition because 
somebody's burning something one side of you or the other and you have to move and you're moving into somebody else's zone that, and that's always trouble but uh, you know I, I, I think I I can't really say that they were any different than I mean than than they were in the past I think transitions transitions sometimes they get tighter sometimes they dry out sometimes you just never know as I as I proved I, I was lost that game so yeah Different game today. Well, great job, Brian. Great seeing you in Step Ladder, man. Good luck in the future, brother. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. Hey, Mike, while you're down there. Yes, sir. Get a hold of Jeff and, and see what the game plan might be. I will see what and I can do. And it's giveaway time, I think, too, also. Full TV chat. We do have a giveaway going on. Here with Jeff Johnson. Jeff, you got a second for me? Yep. What's the game plan here with Parker? Well, Parker needs to throw more strikes than Chris does. But we need to get a different shape so we can carry them flat sevens a little bit more. I think the dark web is going to come into play for sure on the right lane. Not sure on the left lane yet. All right, I'll let you do your thing. Looking for more shape, Tom. They're looking for more down lane motion, it looks like. Well, it's kind of funny that, uh, you know, earlier Parker thought the right lane was basically a gimme. He had to figure out the left lane. Now he's trying to figure out more shape on the right lane, which we've seen in the previous match. He's having a little bit of trouble on that right lane. Chris is still throwing pearl balls, taking them to 12. It's just a matter of how deep he's going to get and how he changes his role, if he has to go around it or if he just goes up the back of it. But just in a few minutes, we're going to be in our title match here at Championship Lanes in Anderson, Indiana. One of Dave Small's, I believe, five facilities that he has. Yeah, so again, Barnes 2-0 and against Parker this year, and the Bone family is 3-0 and against the Barnes family this year, as Justin defeated Ryan at Junior Gold this year. And Chris said that he's going to try to get one tonight for his family. He said it in jest, but I think he kind of meant it, too. Oh, I'm sure he meant it. There's no doubt in my mind that he meant it. This year in majors, Chris Barnes finished 11th at the Villages. He finished 5th at the Masters, 4th at the U.S. Open, 2nd at the PBA 50 Cup. He has been the top seed after qualifying five times this year. He also three times has lost in the bracket format, being the number one seed this year. Last week he was the number one seed on the show, lost to Parker Bone. This week here, number one seed on the show. Well, he was number one seed, but Mike Calvin beat oh, him. Oh, that's right, Calvin beat him. He didn't it, get to, he didn't get to Bull Parker. He, he didn't, yeah, he had to work his way up, and didn't get to Bull Parker. Who's your pick, Mister Cotte? I. I got to go with Parker. I mean, Chris is throwing absolutely an incredible ball. He's throwing the Wolverine now, uh, the new one. But again, did Brad help him out? Did he mess him up? Parker's got the hot hand. Uh, he's been seeing the lane better than anybody, obviously. And the adjustments he's been making are incredible to say the least. I got to go with Parker. Who are you going with? Mr. Smalls? Hmm. I know you want to see Parker win, so you have a three-peat. But there you, you go. Who do you think is going to win? I think Parker has the advantage right now. Mike Flanagan, the guy that sees more bowling than God. Who do you think? Well, I'll tell you what. Um, first of all, I, 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 I just got to say, Parker's leading the points this year, 35,495 points. Chris Barnes is second, 27,385 points. These are the best two players on this tour this year. Facing off head-to-head, -head. we got righty versus lefty. Both Hall of Famers. I told Parker in this booth, he's got no chance this week. I said it to call him out. So I'm going to say it again. Parker has no chance in this match. I'm taking Barnes. And I hope if Parker wins, I can go up there and those will be the first words I'll say to him. <laughs> Woo, that was that was a big statement there, big guy. I'm glad I wear my Depends. Holy cow. Lord. Let's give him a nice round of applause. 
That was almost bitter, Mr. Flanagan. Barnes just said, this family hasn't lost in a month. <laughs> the whole crowd chuckled. Here we go, championship match. All five of them. I mean, 100 of them. Yeah, you got a nice little crowd here. I like it. To those that write for Bowler's Journal, they should all receive pay decreases for not having to type as many words on the articles about winning <laughs> at any level. Barn and bone. The over-under, 75% over 234. What's the, what's the score of this match? Come on, give me a number. 247 is going to be the winner. Two thirty five to two thirty two. Two fifty six. Okay. Who shoots two fifty six? Secret. Secret. <laughs> Tom, I love that. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> So now we get to see Chris Barnes. He's made seven of 11 championship round. It's, it's an every week thing with Chris Barnes being on the show. He missed one event because he bowled the. I don't even know why he tries to qualify anymore. He Just bowled the family the event with Ryan. And he didn't miss in uh, practice. Wow. And a 4-7-10. His first shot with a 4-7-10. Yes. And he's throwing that Wolverine. You know, he pulled to the right of me in qualifying. And maybe I wasn't paying attention, but I never seen him throw that ball this week. I, I, I did see I this. I haven't either. I seen the Zen the whole time. So, obviously, he's seen something in that ball over the Zen he liked better. But not the way you want to open up the championship match, especially against Parker right now. Or for that matter, even against me. I might take advantage of it. You never know. I see how you are. That's right. Tim. Gets a count. Uh, at least get two. It's still, you know, we got a 279 match already. There we go. 290 you match. Gotta look, you got to look on the bright side. 290 right? match. 279 to 290. Yeah. There you go. Hey, um, we're bowling for a thousand dollars after this again. Sure. Okay. Cool. As long Thanks. as you're putting them both up. Uh, heck no. <laughs> <laughs> heck no. I know where your wife keeps it hidden. Look at how far Barnes is on the left. Inside. Tw the it, that was like 25 at the wow. arrows and runaway Brooklyn. That ball had no chance. That, it, that, ne it never got right. It. And that is not okay. the confidence booster to start no, the championship match I'm with. literally confused to the fact that I can't believe he's not throwing this. I, the Wolverine's a brand-new ball. I don't know if it's it's a really shiny pearl ball. I don't know if it's supposed to be cleaner than the Zen, but he had such a good look with the Zen. Yeah, I believe it's the, uh, the Wolverine Moss is what they call that. I have a Zen. I love it. Love my Zen. Needless to say, though, Chris got a strike, which is exactly what he needed to do in the second frame coming right. off an open because you want to throw a double after an open frame, and now he's going to have that opportunity in the third. No matter how he got it done, it looks the same on the scoreboard. I think Parker's going to step up and go bang, bang, Tom. What do you think? I think so. Dark web on the right lane. Ball change. Oh, I like the way that one finished. That finished hard, See, a lot harder. Yeah, and he, it was eight at the tracer. Down lane? 10. It, oh, I was left of 10. I think Nine. that was an original danger zone. Didn't he just switch to a danger zone? Really? That's what the ball reaction looked like. Yeah, it was oh, one wait a minute. I just, I just warped to 2022. You just, you just yeah. dated yourself. Y you're in a different decade. Just be pretty, Flanagan. That's what we pay you for. Oh, thank you, Dave. Very yeah, nice of you to say. Yeah. That's why we're back here. We have faces for radio. Looking for the double. Ooh, oh, a little high flush. Two different balls, Tommy. As that, I like to say, call the plumber. That is why they are the greats. There is no rule in bowling that you have to throw the same ball on a pair of lanes. This is very true. 
But, you know, it's amazing. Even in league, guys know they don't have a reaction on one lane, and they still keep throwing the same ball instead of choosing to throw something else. Would that be you? That would be this guy. Chris that was 22 way. to, like, 10-11. Game on here by Chris Barnes. He's taking advantage of that crossover. Yes, he is, and that's what you have to do. That's what the greats do. Chris Barnes does it right here. Looked a lot better See, through that yeah, shot. Yeah, that, that ball looked way better. Yeah, he got through it good. He didn't cut it short that time. I want to give a shout-out to Leslie Bones and a text into the booth. They are celebrating Brandon's birthday and watching the show at Rev Rates Bones Elite Training. Go Parker Bone the third. Miss you, Leslie. Linda Barnes is in the chat with us tonight. Thanks for always being there in the chat with us, giving us some information, Linda. We certainly do appreciate it, and we're looking forward to seeing you back out on the lane sometime soon. We were actually efforting to have a, or petitioning to have a over 50, under 50 in a female tournament, and I suggested to Chris on the air here, maybe he could bowl with Linda and Ryan. Oh, would yeah, that, that be fun? Yeah, that would be good. That would be cool. For the three-backer. Pretty shot. Well, that was a much better shot than the left lane. That first shot must have just got away from him. Yep, he pured Rip. that one. He settled down S now on this pair. Slide, step. He got that hesitation right there in the third step. Two-step power step. That, just an incredible approach. He's right there at that 11. It's like 11 at the tracer, 10 at the back part of the tracer. Mm-hmm. you got to have the right touch and speed to get it to still read off the end of the pattern, considering the length of the pattern being 46 feet. And this, and you said it right there, this was a speed shot, I think, being 46 feet uh, and the way the track played and the out of bounds and you had to get the ball to turn the corner. Uh, you could literally overthrow the ball. I, and a lot of guys actually shortened their approach this week, moved up on the approach so they could throw it a little slower so the ball would transition on the back end. That was right over 10, and that was not even good. Aye. Aye, 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 aye. That's not good. That's an unusual leave there that you're not going to see every day. It, basically, the left-handed PBA washout without the 10 pin. Two, four, seven, eight, and the six. Six pin. Parker, Parker pick. and Jeff, they made a decision to bowl aggressive on the right lane because I'm sure they think they need a big score against Barnes. But when you do go to a more aggressive ball, you run the risk of leaving some weird splits. Gets the count. Well, he got the count, and which is important. That's 73 in the fourth, but... Chris with a three-bagger up, that's not exactly what you wanted to do. So it'll be interesting if he goes back that lane and switches back to the other ball or makes a move. Parker up very quickly here. That could be a frustration up quick. That was pure. Either that ball is getting a tape change because he just picked it up off the rack or it's getting into the bag. Brian M. in the chat, I want to highlight his comment, maybe the, the, the quote of the day here. We are privileged to keep watching these great bowlers week after week out here on the PBA 50 Tour. Also, Linda is at home watching, and Troy is watching as well tonight, cheering on Dad. Johnny Campos has been part of the PBA media forever, I think. He's always in the chat. Oh, that was just a pinch on the light side. That's where the speed part comes in. You get a little bit firm. Doesn't make the turn. That's got to be a welcomed 10 pin for Parker because that leaves, leaves, at least lets him in the back door. Yeah, and if I was bowling Barnes right now, I would say, okay, now we're even. Right. Because he carried the Brooklyn strike right. and made a great shot, wraps a 10. The carry gods came yeah. into play. We're now even. Right.
Go ahead, say what you're thinking. What am I thinking? Yeah, you're saying that you're you're over there. I'm just pondering, smirking. pondering right now. Six nine ten. Oh, that was <coughs> remnants of the very first shot mm -hmm. that he threw. So, I was the, the, well, the way I see it. And correct me if I'm wrong, because I, pro I probably am. But to me, right now, it's that mid lane. He's not getting the ball through the mid lane the right way, and the ball is just checking early before it ever gets to the spot down lane. And that could be because of the way they try. Uh, and I'm going to go back to the Brad Angelo thing of throwing that dull stuff right down there, you know, in between at 15 mm -hmm. and soaking up that oil. So the, the ball is just checking early for him. He's got a, the shot before on that. He got it through that. It read beautifully. And if he eases up just an iota, the ball checks on him. Yeah, or if he just barely misses in, it doesn't go Rip. left or right enough. Or gets to the, I, think, I think if Chris watched that back, he would tell us it just wasn't a good shot. Now, if he, if he wants to be able to have a little more error room, he would grab a ball that's cleaner to the front to help him through the front. But you've got to be careful to make sure the ball still recovers in corners down lane. That was right over 10. That's that's so what I was waiting for. <coughs> now Parker is right back in the match. So this is going to be a slugfest now for the next four frames. Yeah, the, the lead is, is two for Barnes. Parker strikes here. He can take the lead in the match. And so far, Parker has liked 37 a little bit better than 38 this game, obviously with that ball change that he put up on 38. But oh, I need Parker to strike out to hit my number. <laughs> I told you I was going to be closer. <laughs> I told you I was going to be closer. I just want to prove uh, Flanagan wrong. I love him, but anyway. Big shot for Parker. Take the lead for the first time truly in the match. That's clean. For the lead. Oh. 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 Solid seven. Great shot. You really can't throw it any better than that. That was good. Yeah, he thought it was there. He's, pu he's he pulling the hammer down, and I think he's surprised that that seven pin stood. Now, th this this is no gimme right now. He's been having some issues getting no, he, out of this ball. Yeah, he, he missed a seven pin and a ten pin. He did. I don't want to wish any misfortune, but we got to watch for it. Wouldn't be doing our jobs if we weren't. Yeah. Jetson. So spares it up, 122 in a sixth. Three-pin match right now. Possible 232 for Parker. Possible 235 for Barnes. What number did I call? 235 and 232? Yeah, okay. Yes, well, you did. It's not over yet. I know, but I'm going to have to come a lot closer than you are. Yeah, well, you know, I was, uh, I'm being the optimistic guy, you know. I love me some Tom Carter. <laughs> Big shot here for Chris. Good shot. Oh, oh I Solid thought that was eight. dead to rights. That was like 22, 23 at the arrows. That was. That was an unbelievable shot by Chris yeah. there. That was insane. Solid eight. Now, I, <laughs> I talked about how that wrapped 10. I like to see it when he goes Brooklyn. But now, now this is just unfair. Yeah, that's. It, he's standing there staring. He, I don't think. To this point, he, he can't believe it didn't strike. That he just got ripped off. With a spare here, it'll be a two-pin match, Tom. Barnes has got the lead by two, both with a spare up. And Chris knows this already, but the thing he's got to do is he's got to wash that out of the brain. Right. He's got to completely put that behind him. Yeah, he, he, well, the one thing you can't do, and, and it's so easy to get to, when you throw it good, you get frustrated. And then you, you start forcing it because you're still a little angry on the inside. And you can't let that happen. He's, like you said, that shot's over. There's nothing you can do about it. The only shot that matters is this one right now. Yep. Left lane. It's going to be really important for Chris to get through this one. Project it down the lane so it doesn't hook early on him. That was a ball change. He went sure back was. to the Zen. That ball reaction was a lot better. 
He wasn't sure if it was going to hook. He yeah. asked it to but hook, see, and it did. That was the ball he threw all week, and he could get it right of the marker, and it recovered. I, I, I'm still kind of dumbfounded on why he, he didn't start with that, but that's why he's in the Hall of Fame, and I'm back here. So Chris now can bowl 234. Parker can bowl 232. Yeah. Bone up in the eighth right lane. That was flush. That was a repeat of the previous shot on that lane. Well, Parker is going to get that shot in the ninth, and then he just has to sit back and wait because – Chris has the ability, if he strikes the ninth, two in the tenth, and gets nine on the fill, that's a win. But this is the one that's most important right now. He's got to get this shot because Parker's, I think, more locked in on the right lane than this one. I think his carry percentage is higher on the right lane when he throws it good with the ball change, but I think his pocket percentage is higher on the left lane. Needs to carry the seven pin here. And does. All right. Well, Parker put the pressure on Barnes here. What a great shot. This has been a dream year for Parker Bone III. Win or lose here tonight. Well, to make that many shows, to already have four wins, to have possible five. And, and three we, out of the last four. <clears throat> and he's still got one more tournament. If he were to win this one, as well as he's bowling, he could have six wins this year. There's only 13 tournaments. <laughs> That's crazy. Barnes got to go through his process here. And execute. Oh, the Money. That w so now, the left lane, Chris has had two definitely Aaron shots on. He's got to finish on that left lane. This ball crossing around 22, 23. That's right at 22 to 11. Down lane, dead flush. So he's going back to the Zen. Yep, Barnes up in the 10th frame. On the left lane. Double and nine is a winner. Push. Oh, Ooh, that ball that, held pocket. Yeah. I was afraid that that ball was up the lane. I was like, oh, is that ball going to push? Yeah. And it did. Yeah, because he didn't get that one as far right. He got it to like 11. So this is the truth or dare right now. Yeah. Live or die. Whatever Chris Barnes does, Parker Bone is going to have to match. Barnes is he taking can, a re-rack? Barnes can lock no. him out. They had a little verbal exchange there. Yeah. This, Chris is, the, this is the big one, Tom. Yeah, he's taking a little extra time. because This he, is the big one. Yeah. We got a cell phone going off back here. God, I hope not. This sh that was oh, oh no that pins. was that was high that never got to the break point that was more like what 12 13 four pin 203 223 Chris's max but he does force Parker to have to double that nine count is huge Parker 223 the score for Chris Barnes. Parker Bone can strike out for 232. Must double and get two pins. Well, <laughs> Captain Obvious again. He's got to get the first one. He's had a good look on the right lane. He's crossing the tracer down lane. This is a huge shot right here. 
and this, these two families have been knocking heads this whole season. Parker steps off. If you're not ready, you're not ready. Man, you could hear a pin drop in this place. That was inside of target. Oh. Something fierce, and that. That's going to do it. That's going to do it. Chris Barnes, he, that was way inside of target. He was like 11, 12 down lane. Oh, goodness. Well, the streak so. comes to an end for the Bone family, and Chris Barnes defeats. Parker Bone the third. We'll get the final score here in a minute. What a great match by these two Hall of Famers. Chris Barnes, 223. Possible. Well, he, he'll have 211. I'm sure that Chris is going to, or Parker's going to strike. Yep, there it is. Chris Barnes, winner here at Championship Lanes in Anderson, Indiana. It does bring the player of the year race a little bit closer. Oh, boy. Uh, 5,000 points uh, separated both. Yeah, and one more tournament to go. Yeah. You're going to go down and do the interview, aren't you? Good job. So, on Weber down there doing the presentation right now. Mike Flanagan will be on the call doing the interview in just a second. So, as soon as John gets through with the presentation and Dave Small giving the check and the money away and the bottle of wine. Awesome job, Nice to have you our champion. Angie, you want to say anything? Make some nice big gals. And very first, congratulations, Chris. Your inaugural here is a nice way to walk away. Yeah. So anyway, congratulations. Thank you for being here. Greatly appreciate it. Um, many more to come. Um, first of all, I do want to take a one small little quick minute to give a shout out to John Weber and Linda Carter for what you guys do behind the scenes. We appreciate that. The staff, the truck, the guys in the back, those guys, they would not be here without you. I know it, it's a very unsung honor and I, I appreciate you guys. Um, and I know these guys do too. Um, so thank you. Um, anyway, congratulations again. And hopefully we'll see you next year. Yes, you better. <laughs> okay, don't run away, everybody. Mike Flanagan coming out for a quick interview with Chris Barnes. Congratulations again to Chris. And uh, thanks for coming out. Hope you enjoyed the matches.
All right, let's give it up one more time for uh, Dave Small and his entire staff here. Bunch of tournaments Dave Small has hosted, and we've got another one next week, so we do appreciate it very much, sir. Also, let's give it up to Parker Bone the third on the run that he's been on. That's a player of the year, right? I don't know. I don't know the points, Chris. You probably know better than I do, but... Uh, Seems Chris like there's a long way ahead. I don't know what <laughs> So, Chris, uh, obviously you had to bowl Parker here, and yeah. uh, the big story in bowling is the Bone versus the Barnes family. How does it feel to win one tonight? Well, so far it's just been the Bone beating the Barnes. Is, uh, so it was nice to kind of even it back up a little bit, to avenge my son for, uh, and maybe myself a little bit too. Uh, Parker's been bowling fantastic, and as usual, he bowled a, he bowled a great game. We got one uh, unusual uh, uh, bad shot out of him, and, and he hasn't had very many of those in a in a gosh, in at least a month. So uh, very fortunate, uh, you know, really happy. And obviously, obviously I owe a lot to a lot of people and in, uh, in including obviously 900 Global, Vice, uh, my sponsors there. And then uh, my wife and kids at home, you know, Ryan's been out here. He's helped me out a lot. Uh, Ryan, or Linda, of course, supports a lot. And Troy fishes a lot while I'm out here. So, uh, you know, he's, he's good at that. But, and then the Anderson clan out in, uh, out in Oregon. It's uh, a lot of people, uh, support you even though they're not here in person and it takes a village sometimes. So I appreciate you guys coming out tonight too. It, uh, it sure makes it a lot more fun when you're here. Well, we certainly love watching the PBA 50 tour every week. It's a hall of fame step ladder and you guys are both hall of famers here. We have a hall of fame, uh, all the banners out here with Lenny, of course, and, and Brian and, and Angelo as well. But I gotta, I gotta talk about you a little bit here because when we cover you on bowl TV over the years, you're very smart in what you do out on the lanes. And I think what happened there in that match, when you switched balls on the left lane, that was the key to the match. Why did you switch balls, and how did you know to switch balls? Uh, well, results. <laughs> the, I, I'd, used, I'd used the other ball. Uh, well, I really hadn't used it much this week at all. And uh, I found out about halfway through there why. Because uh, it started to overreact way more and, and make the pair separate way more than, uh, than, than that Zen had. And so I went back to what had worked the rest of the week, Made a lucky guess and got away with a couple of, you know, a couple light swishers. And uh, that hasn't always gone that way. The right lane actually threw more good shots, but the ring 10 and the, and the stone 8 and kind of kept away from, from stringing anything together. And uh, Parker had a couple of ring 7s that left me, left me hanging in there with a chance. Yeah, pretty awesome, pretty awesome. Let's give it up one more time for Chris Barnes. Congratulations, Chris, on another title. And uh, you just keep mowing them over here on the PBA 50 Tour. <laughs> Man, I love it out here. It's uh, it's a much more relaxed uh, uh, atmosphere. The guys, there's much more camaraderie versus everybody beating each other's heads in, trying to make a living. And uh, uh, and it's nice to make a few more shows on this side than I've made on the other side in the last few years too. So uh, yeah, but it's it's a lot more fun. Got to bowl, got to bowl one of my best crosses of the year. I bowled with Tony Franklin and Don Hogue this week, and we had a, a great time even during qualifying. And I can't remember the last time we did that on the regular tour. So. <laughs> All right, well, there you have it, Chris Barnes. Congratulations again, Chris. Mike Flanagan with the interview with Chris Barnes. He's going to bring it back into the booth. Congratulations, Chris Barnes, and to the Barnes family. Uh, the whole family such great bowlers, and so is the Bone family, and that's why they're all Hall of Famers. It's just it's uh, on my side of the table, it's a joy to watch to see those guys do what they do, and they do it so well. Uh, envious is a uh, small word. I think any of us that are bowlers have always wanted to be where they're at, and uh, I just feel lucky that I get to uh, sit here and get to see greatness happen and history happen right in front of me. Mike Flanagan back in the booth. Yes, sir. Another great stepladder here tonight. For the three of us, I got to sh short, shrink down here a little bit here. <laughs> yeah. I got to slouch down here. I, I didn't check. Did you turn that down I a little? I didn't check the framing there. <laughs> Tom Carter, we had a good one here tonight. First of all, let's give a shout out to David Small for uh, for joining us here in the booth. He loves bowling. Oh, it's like seventy some tournaments that he's done. Yeah, uh, it's it's amazing what this guy does for the PBA and bowling in general. He he absolutely breathes bowling. He was bringing up stuff. Stats. Oh, yeah. I, geek stats, you know. Like, how do you remember that? But he, he's a bowling geek. 
Yeah, he is, and he's a great host, and, and all the folks that he brings in to work his facilities. We all ate here this week. We all were around everybody, hires great people, infectious community well, in each one of his centers. Well, and we got another one next week, too. Well, well, yeah, and he's got five centers, and he says, I have another one, but I can't tell you. So he's buying another one. Oh, wow. And he remodels it. He goes in and just does an incredible job of remodeling his centers for his bowlers. I, you can't say enough about what Dave does for bowling in general. I wish we had more proprietors like it. Yeah, me too. And so next week it'll be the 13th event on the PBA 50 tour, and we'll be bringing it to you from Dave Small's Jack 60 lanes. And that place is totally remodeled. It is, and I can't wait to get there. I've been uh, there before the Hopefully we can give you a show. You yeah, know? we'll have to take the camera around for sure there. Now I have a prediction for next week, Tom. Oh, boy. We're back in Michigan. Parker Bone the third is going to win. That would be his fifth title. Dave coming in. Dave, Dave. <laughs> he wants to say something so bad. He, oh, I'm trying to find my damn phone. Oh, he's looking for his phone. 